Hello guys, welcome back to the podcast. It's Loretta and Dan again. Welcome back. And today we have something different to talk to you guys about. It's a little bit different. Very different actually. Very, very different. Even a little bit strange. Yeah, it is a little bit strange. A little bit weird. A little bit bit out there. A little bit woo woo. So today when we were in the car, we were driving around aimlessly in the rain with the kids and you'd been wanting to do a float tank for a while, haven't you? Well, not necessarily a float tank, but I did want to do an infrared sauna. Infrared sauna, okay. I've got a friend who's um, in infrared and it's his passion and he loves it and he talks about it all the time. I have an infrared light at home, which I use sometimes, but not really on the regular. So you're wanting to go to a place that has an infrared sauna Oh uh, Yeah, and I like saunas. Like, I like to sweat and relax. I find saunas to be very relaxing. And because you were driving, I called up and yep. I was asking about the two-for-one package and long story short, all the infrared saunas were booked out, weren't they? Yeah, they were, yeah. So then you said, well, what's the, the next option? And they had a float tank available, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yeah. So I just was like, you know what? You've been wanting to do it for ages, so I just booked it in for you. Yeah. And you were so anxious from that moment. Well, yeah, it's kind of like, why did you do that? Call them back and cancel it. <laughs> you did. But you were yeah. driving like, oh, my goodness, like I can't believe I'm doing this. Well, the thing is, so last year I went for a bit of an episode for a while there where I sort of had like this low blood pressure thing. Yeah, you did. And I was having to work out what it was and it was really weird. And when it would come on, I'd feel really dizzy and lightheaded and sometimes I'd have to lie down and I'd get the shakes. It was um, really weird. And you're worried that having all that magnesium might Would have set it off because... Giving you one, low blood pressure or something. Exactly. One of the things with too much magnesium is it can give you low blood pressure. Yeah, so that was my initial concern. I was like, oh, it sounds like because a float tank has like 400 kilos of magnesium in it. Oh, wow. That is a lot, isn't it's it? It's a lot, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, so I was thinking, you know, if that magnesium gets absorbed into my body, it might be a bit too much and I might... Have some side effects. Yeah. That was my initial sort of... So you were really of, worried. You were that like, was what, I was what am I about. doing? <laughs> yeah, I was like, once if it sets off these low blood pressure episodes again. Yeah. And then when you came home, you were like, okay, I need to work out. I need to like burn off this well, yeah, tension. I, yeah, I just thought, yeah, exactly. I wanted to get a workout in and see how I went. Float therapy is beneficial for meditation and mindfulness as well as for the following reasons. So let's just start with mindfulness. So for, for those of you who don't know, you know, I have been pretty big, pretty hip on the personal development space, and I've definitely done a lot of mindfulness and meditation. It's safe to say I've done my fair share of meditating. I've done... I'm guilty for probably not doing much on that side of things, am I? Yeah, and I can definitely validate that. Yeah. Yeah, Loretta um, is not a big meditator. I don't think you've meditated ever, have you? Look, I can't say I can consciously remember when I have meditated, no. Yeah. I think we've done some breath work. Well, yeah, like you haven't... a bit of breath work here and there. If you could call that meditation, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure you have meditated because it's, you know, it's a human state and we can all do it. I'm sure you have been in states of flow and you've meditated, but you haven't, as you say... Consciously, like, sat down for five minutes and gone, oh, I'm going to meditate today. I don't think so, no. Well, I have. So my first ever um, meditation experience was actually at my dad's house. So my dad used to live in Australia. He was living... Oh, he was living in Byron, wasn't he? Pretty close to Byron. So it was inland from Byron, basically. It was in, like, a little mud house in, like, the rainforest. And this house, right, so to give you an idea, this would have been going back about 12 years. So, uh, you know, I was really stressed out at the time. I was working in sales and fitness. I was making a lot of sales and I was working really hard and doing lots of overtime. And one month I didn't take a weekend off at all. And when I went out to visit my dad, I was super stressed and highly strung. And my dad just told me to just relax, just relax, just chill. So in this mud house. It was in a mud house and it had glass windows everywhere. So it had very little walls. It was like mud house somehow. I don't know how they make houses of mud. Don't ask me. He said it was made of mud and it had gl- it had a lot of glass windows. Interesting. Yep. And he had just got back from a couple of 
I think it's called Vipassana Retreats, which is a meditation retreat for 10 days where they do nothing but literally meditate. They don't talk to anybody. They eat once a day at night, which is like a vegetarian meal, and they just do that. Wow. And from what I've gathered, they're very, very hard to do. So did he get you to do some sort of he did. Yep. meditation where you don't yeah. talk? So I was going on like a crazy person because I was living in Sydney and everything was going on for me and I was also having a lot of personal stuff that was going on in my life at, the, at that stage. So I was carrying on a bit and he basically said, hey, chill, try this meditation. So he had a meditation on his phone and it was a yoga nija meditation, which was from his meditation teacher in New Zealand. And the guy had a very soothing voice and it um, just sort of eased in and it was very relaxed and calm. I was thinking, this is bullshit. This is just stupid. Why am I doing this meditation? This is So what happened in the end? So I started doing the meditation, and if he didn't actually give me any hints and tips, I don't think I could have probably meditated at that stage. Like you're too in my head. up in your head yeah. to so even go he, there. Yeah. So he gave me a few really good tips, and one of the good ones was to sort of tense parts of my body on the floor that I wanted to feel, and then let them go. So like tense your hands? So it could be my hands laying on the floor, tense them, feel like I'm tensing them, feel like they're heavy, and then just let them go, then moving up to my forearms and doing the same thing. Did that work? It must have because I actually fell asleep oh, like wow. 10, 15 minutes into it. So it's very powerful. Yeah, and when I woke up, um, I'm surprised I had this experience in my first meditation experience. And when I woke up, it was, I just had this amazing feeling of calm and peace and joy. And I could just hear the rain landing on this mud hut in the bush. And I could see. So you're very aware of your surroundings. Yeah. You? And I could see like the colors of the trees and, and the rain and through the glass and, you know, the sound of the rain dropping on the roof. So getting back to. The float tank. Well, How did it make you feel? Yeah, it was interesting. Let's just backtrack a bit. So I remember I turned and said to him, he goes, how was it? And I was being a bit arrogant and ignorant. I said, oh, I don't know. I fell asleep. And he laughed and he said, he goes, I don't think you're really asleep, though. He goes, that's the meditative state. So to get back to this float tank experience, I don't think I quite got there in my first float tank experience. I think they said... At least three goes before you can kind of get into it. Well, there's a lot of reasons why. So for a start, you're laying in a pool naked. Right. How did that go? Well, you, you don't think it would be a big deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Like, but think about it. You're in a private pool by so yourself the on with off? the door locked. You don't think... That that would be an issue. Okay, lights on or off? Well, technically off. Oh. Because you turn the lights off because part of getting into the meditative state in the float tank is sensory deprivation. Because you're floating, there's no gravity because the water is so dense. Mm. Yeah, so that was the first hurdle. I think it was because obviously I'm lying there naked, so there's like a lot of... Yeah, well, that's a, lot a bit of, confronting, I would say. Yeah, that and also my head was going a million miles an hour because they had this heater up above me and this heater was heating the room in the pool. And the pool is basically, it's heated to your body temperature. But I sort of had these thoughts that this heater, if this heater falls down and lands on me, so you really asleep. weren't like you were just yeah. I was like, I'm gonna have everything. I'm gonna have full body burns on my body, and it's gonna be really bad, and, and I'm naked, and it's weird. Like you, you, you wouldn't think being naked would be a big deal. You'd think, oh, like it's not much different to just having underwear on, but like in a public place, even with the door closed, it's a bit weird. Yeah, it and sounds ve- a bit weird. 
Yeah, and then like if you're floating in a pool. Um, because then you're obviously like not under the water, so you're well, exposed, aren't you? Yes. So it's like you're floating around and everything's on display. And it must have been working to a degree as I was getting into it because there were times when I started to re- relax and then I was worried I was going to go to sleep. And I think being naked in the pool, floating around to sleep, I had a few fears, like obviously naked, uh, the heater falling down, or me possibly even drowning. Someone like walking in as well? Mm, I was more worried about that if I fell asleep and I couldn't wake up. Yeah, okay. And were there like cameras there? Or I don't like, know. How does it work? I Look, I doubt it. Yeah, okay. Because you're encouraged to go naked. So do they have like candles? Well, they have optional candles, but you, you're not meant to have any Did you like light. the candle? Oh, Come on. it's like a little tea light. Did you light the it's candles? electric. Oh, electric one. Yeah, I didn't light it. <laughs> I didn't you didn't light it. Light. So, no. so, okay, pitch black. But obviously the water was kind of a lum- like luminous, wasn't it? Only with the light on. Oh, okay. As soon as you turn the light off, it's not. It's right. pitch dark. Really? Mm. Okay. This is interesting. Although if you did fall asleep, I'm pretty sure that the filtration system... Oh, would um, kick in after a certain Well, it time. kicks in like 10 minutes before the end. Right. And I think that that sh- like I saw that working at the end, it was pretty fierce. I reckon it would probably it'd wake, wake you up. up. Mm. But yeah, obviously I was just concerned if I fell asleep and didn't wake up and had to come in and get me and I was naked, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's I was like, I don't know if I want to go through I that. would say that anyone yeah. would have though, wouldn't it? That would... That's quite normal, I would say. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, Yeah, so there's a few things there that sort of blocked me from sort of having the full effect. Although I definitely noticed things. So, like what? What did you notice? Well, so because the water's so dense, because it's got so much salt, it's really buoyant, so you float. And the first thing I noticed was um, how stiff and tense I was. Like, even though the water was holding me up, it was like my whole upper body was, like, tight and almost cramping trying to hold me up, even though I didn't have to. So my arms initially were, like, internally rotated flat down by my sides, like how you would normally meditate. So I tipped my arms up and back behind my head like a stop sign. Yep. And let them go behind me, and I pushed my head down and back to really try to stretch out. And did that help? Or? Yeah, so I did that for the first five to ten minutes, and that sort of helped to relieve a lot of tension. So they're saying here that it reduces stress and pain relief. Look. It, did you feel like that happened? Yes, or? because as I said, it relieved the tension. Yeah. Once I sort of started to get into it, I was still worried about falling asleep. So speaking of sleep which you can attest to tomorrow about it improves your quality of sleep. Apparently, one hour of float therapy is equal to four to eight hours of sleep, which is pretty incredible. Yeah, it is. And I know that sounds like an outrageous claim and some people um, would probably say it's false. Although I did see it on the internet in a medical journal where it had basically been debunked saying it's actually true. Wow. Yeah, so for, for those of you... You need a bit of extra sleep. Yeah, if you're out there, if you're a bit sceptical, if you're like, oh, that sounds like it's not true, apparently it is. Yeah. So what what's actually in the bath, like in the float tank? What I think salts is it? Epsom salts. Epsom salts. Around okay. 400 kilos or 1,000 pounds from right. what I gather. Which is a lot because there's really not really that much water in there. Yeah. And you definitely don't need to take your magnesium tonight then. Well, I don't know. It's hard to say because, as I said, I, I didn't really notice any crazy, like, magnesium feeling. Yeah. Like, if I ingest magnesium orally, you know, it makes you feel quite tired, quite drowsy, quite sleepy. I didn't notice that in the float tank. What are some clinical reasons to float? People float clinically for fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, joint pain. I definitely have some joint pain. Which we all know about. (laughs) Yep, which I've spoken about. PTSD, anxiety, depression, and insomnia. So, interesting, the lovely lady I was speaking to on the front counter, she actually said that she initially got recommended floating because she was suffering from insomnia, and she said it helped a lot. So everyone's going there for different 
benefits yeah, for and different reasons. reasons. I think for a lot of people, it's probably just to chill out and relax. Yeah, it's just one of those things. So was it busy this place on a Saturday yes. night? Yeah. Just in case you guys are wondering, yes, it is trendy. Yes, young hip people go there. Yeah. And so how does you it won't work? Be there so on your own. can you go you, there? You won't with be some weirdo floating by yourself. Like, what if I don't want to go by myself? You'd have to probably go with a friend. Okay, but you can go together. I've seen couples in there coming out looking quite relaxed, yes. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Okay. So people do go together. They go into the same I've bar? I've seen it. So, well, the they, same I don't know. Party. I didn't follow them in. But, okay. I assume so. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So they've got big, bigger float tanks for couples and oh, friends. I honestly don't know. Maybe they go in the same one. Yeah. Maybe they hold hands in their shoulders. Maybe shoulder. they do. I wouldn't know. I was maybe there by they myself. Float together. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's how they do it. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So they do recommend that you go naked because it helps with the buoyancy. Oh, is that? I why? think that's the big part of it. So be like, yeah. So you definitely need to go naked. Well, you probably could wear something light, like speedos or something. Like, say, if I was going to actually try to go to sleep. I'd probably try to wear speedos or something. Why is that? Well, it would just overcome that fear of being found asleep and you're not naked. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, at least well, you got speedos yeah, on. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Maybe try that next time. Wear yeah, the speedos. I could, I could do. Buy a pair of speedos. Yeah. Budgie smugglers. Yep. So I guess another thing would be people probably worried about drowning. Yes, which is what I was. You're concerned very about. worried about. Falling asleep and being in this float tank. Well, what I did notice, so I actually tried the theory to roll over. Oh, I tried okay. to do it a few times just to see if it's yeah. really that easy. Yeah, and how did it go? It's actually really not because the so buoyancy once you're on your back, you're on your back. of the water, it's very hard to roll over. The water is very, very dense. It's very heavy. It's not very easy to just flip over. It's kind of like if you're in a bed with a hyper-heavy bed sheets on you. Okay. Probably the easiest way to describe it. Okay. Yep, not easy. So not easy to roll over. I don't think you could. Right. But you, you'd have to really muscle You'd be it. struggling to roll over. I think so. I've probably got a little bit of work to do before I've overcome my fear of getting into a float tank. The real fear for me was like falling asleep or drowning in the naked and then having to come in. So did you and fall like, asleep? There's a few question. times when I almost nodded off, yeah. And what happened before that, I noticed. So, so I, you're very relaxed, it sounds like. Well, because it. there's nothing going on, you're floating. Yeah. Your senses, everything's like. Was it's just it hard crazy. work to float? Like, no, you just got to put your head back. Okay. So you, you got to focus on that. So And you don't put your head in the water. The thing I noticed was I was very stiff throughout my, like, my upper body. And so I had to physically like really push my head back. Right. But once everything relaxed there, Overcome. like I think it's normal to have a fear of drowning. Yes. I think you'd have to fall asleep the first time and wake up and everything would be okay and eventually you'd get into it. Yes. But I think it would take a lot of floats. Yes. Like I heard Joe Rogan talking about it, his first ever session many years ago. And he said it was a very much an out of body experience, and he, um, yeah, he basically struggled with it the first time. It's like being in space. Now I will really want to do it. It's like being. In I space. want to try it. Like it'll be the closest you could have to having no gravity. It's, I'm, I'm definitely. I was on the fence up until then. Yeah, really. Yeah. So that sold it to you. Yeah, that gravity? sold it to me. That sold it to me. Well, and when I first came in, you said it looked like I was floating. It did. You walked across the room and I was like, oh, my goodness. What? Like, yeah, you look like you were actually like floating across the room. Yeah, interesting. It was crazy. Like you were so light on your feet. Yeah. When you walked through the room. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Well, what I did notice is I said how much tension I held in my body. And I didn't think I was that stiff, but I was like, I felt like I was tensing every muscle when I was laying in there. I was like, what the hang is going on? As I said, I had to really stretch out and stretch back. And the girl on reception, actually, as I was coming through, she gave me that advice. She said, look, 
if you're like me and you're really tight for your um, neck and back and you hold a lot of your anxiety and stress there, she said, um, you, you're going to really stiffen up. And she said to put my arms over my head and stretch out. Mm-hmm. So what I did initially was I did that because I felt myself very tense and it was very uncomfortable. I felt like I was about to get a cramp. So I put my arms over my head and I had my legs and I was actually pushing on the top of the pool and the bottom of the pool. So I was floating backwards and forwards <laughs> for a while. Almost like some weird family guy episode where I was just going back and forward, back and forward, back and forward. Okay, so I'm really curious Like now. a clown. So how deep was the water? Like this float tank. Are um, we talking like 30 to 50 centimetres or like about a big pool? F- probably 30. Right. Okay. It's not super so deep. it's not deep. But it's quite wide and long. Yes. So it's, um, yeah, it's definitely bigger than a bathtub. But we're not talking like a big pool. That no, it's like... long enough to stretch out. So I'm almost six foot and I could get my arms all the way out to the sides and up over my head. So they've obviously designed it. Yeah, without touching. I was almost, I think I was probably almost touching the sides going out width ways with my hands when I was doing like the starfish. So it's relatively wide, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So it's obviously. So unless you're huge, yeah. You would need to have a double one though for couples. Surely they don't both get in there. Maybe they do. Look, they could. Maybe they do. They could. It'd be very cosy, wouldn't it? Yeah, look. Depends. You're like rubbing shoulders with them. Like I think if you just had your arms out to the side or over your head, yeah, you could easily fit two people in. Yeah. Maybe they do have them. Yeah. The same. Yeah, like you probably – but uh, – Well, maybe you just do You could to go toe. as a couple, but I think it defeats the purpose. Yeah. You're meant to be in your own meditative state. I think so. Yeah. I think it would be – it would add another dimension. And that couple or your partner might also add like a safety zone. So yeah. you don't have to overcome all these things I was well, talking about. Well, that's true, yes. Because you've got someone there with you. Yes, they're holding your hand. Yes, yeah, 100%. So you're not actually doing the work. No. You're half doing the work. You're counting getting there, but you're still holding yeah, on. Yeah, because part of it is you're there alone for an hour. You can't talk or anything. You can't hear anything. You've got no senses. You've got nothing to... Overload your senses with, you've got no phone. No technology. You've, yeah, you, no you're not music. driving, you're not listening to music, you're not ordering food, no you're not kids. working. No kids, no wife. No wife. No husband. No husband. You're just alone naked with a hot <laughs> light over you. Now your forehead's going to fall off the ceiling and burn your bloody junk off. <laughs> and then you're right that you're going to wake up naked and some, Someone's gonna some find girl's going to be like, oh, hey. <laughs> Like it's time to get out. Like, so you know what? You put the towel. Maybe on. next time you just try it with the budgie smugglers. Yeah, and then I'll probably maybe have. Maybe you see then whether I'll, or not you can overcome that fear. I'll probably just have the fear of drowning then, though. Yeah. Because the fear of drowning for me was stronger than being naked. Oh, okay. Like it was a lot stronger. So why do you think that? Because you're never really well, fearing that. Ever. I don't think you've ever said that you're fearing down running. As a kid, I fell asleep in the bath once and my okay. mum got really upset with me. Yep. So that would be a strong reason why. Like anything in your childhood like that would be like quite triggering. Yep. So that would be the first one. But also I've almost drowned a couple of times surfing. Big cyclone swell when yep. I used to surf. So there's um, that fear there. Yeah, like I literally once I was underwater for a couple of minutes and I got hit with two really big wa- uh, three really big waves. Yeah. And even my brother thought I was like gone. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I've got there's definitely there's some. There's that fear there. That's the problem of being an adult, right? As life happens, stuff happens to you. You carry it around. Well, it's interesting it's in because somewhere. I don't have that fear of drowning. Yeah. Like with the bathtub or. With the surf, but I will never get on a jet ski. Oh, yeah, because of what happened to your friend. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes, so mm. very long story will make very, very short. One of my close friend's husbands passed away. He drowned on a jet ski. So I have that fear there with a jet ski and drowning, mm. but with... Other things like being in a bathtub or, you know, being in the surf, that doesn't trigger me. Yeah. 
But being on a jet ski, riding yeah. tandem. Yeah, absolutely. A few beers in does trigger you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I will never go on a jet ski for that reason. And it's funny too, right, because you see like young kids or teenagers or whatever out on jet skis, probably half drunk, just fanging it around and it freaks you out. Yeah, without life jackets and, oh. Where for me, you know, riding a jet ski on flat water doesn't panic me. Yeah. So everyone's got these different triggers, Triggers, don't they? yeah. So... The main thing with jet skis in my mind is people don't really know how to ride them and they don't realise that if you turn a jet ski with no throttle because it's a, literally a jet ski and that's how it propels itself through water is it basically sucks in water and blows it out through its thing. If you don't have the power on, the jet ski won't turn. Oh, right, and then it locks up or something. Well, it just goes straight ahead. Right. Because um, it sucks some water and shoots it out the back, and that's how it sort of drives and steers. Mm. And a lot of people don't realise this basic function of how they work, and that's sort of how they have accidents. So when's your next float tank experience, Dan? Have you booked in for the next one yet? Uh, I've got two more sessions. I haven't booked one in yet. I think I'll probably do another one maybe next weekend. Look, I did find it very relaxing. As I said, I found out some stuff about me. You know, I found out that the reason why I struggle to let go sometimes is because of fear. I didn't actually realise that until I was lying in that float tank. So, so it even, made you more aware of fear. And I think it was because my, sensor, my senses were completely deprived and that's amazing Nothing was going because on. you have done so much meditation But I before. think that's what helped me get to this point too. So I suppose that's the other thing I want to make clear, guys, with this mindfulness and meditation and personal development. You've been on a very long journey. Yes, and there's nothing that you're really going to do where you're going to have this big light bulb moment and your life's going to change completely and everything's going to shift and it's like you've been hit by lightning. I think for most of us, you look, that could happen for some, but I think for most of us, this whole sort of awakening, enlightenment, or whatever you want to call it, or journey, is very slow, and it's like the Builds educational the variety. It's like the... So it's just another thing that you're using now as part of your yes, mindfulness Yes, but I think if I hadn't experience. have done that work before, I would never have come to that conclusion in a, in a float tank. So like, for example, with me, because I'm, you know, I would say that I'm not anywhere near the level of, you know, experience and thank journey you. that you, you have with well, mindfulness and meditation. I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah. Flexing your muscles as you do <laughs> this, as I say that. <laughs> But it would be interesting to see what I get from it because yeah. who knows? I might come out of it going, well, that was just a great bath. Yes, or well, you might come out of it I might by just knowing go, you, you'll just come out saying that was shit. It hurt my skin. You move on. Oh, yes. Well, how was your oh, skin Oh, okay, actually? so a heads up. So I've got like a bit of this, um, what's it called, dermatitis. Eczema. On Dermatitis. my hands from COVID, from using all the um, hand sanitizer over the last two years, it's really dried up my skin and my hands. And very, very red. Yeah, so like it's, it's like yeah. bright red. Yeah, it's like almost a dermatitis now on my hands. Yeah, and it's like all on your palm. Yeah. Like it covers the surface area of your yeah. palms. Yeah, so that burned. Right. Really burned. So when you first got in? Yeah. How long did it take for it to settle down? Probably 10, 15 minutes. That's quite a long time to sit through. Yeah, yeah, it was, although... For, uh, How's it feeling now? Yeah, it feels good. And for those of you who don't know, salt water is actually... Healing. Most of the time it's very good for your skin. Like if you've got any of those sorts of skin conditions, it should actually help. And I've got a lot of problem skin issues, don't I? So You do. And as a kid, I had eczema, and my parents reckon the only thing that fixed it was going to the ocean. Yeah. So, so maybe I don't might. shy away if you've got – but just be aware it will sting. Maybe I might and get, if you a get lot it of in your eyes. Oh, yes. It'll sting too. Yes. <laughs> Did you get it in your eyes? Uh, look, I managed to avoid it. Managed to avoid it. I got it. a little okay. bit in there. Did a you? A little bit, yeah. But most of it, you know, was on my hands. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, 
like I said, maybe I should give it a go and I might not get the benefit from the mindfulness on the first go. Look, you still will. You still will, but you might have... I might just have a really great sleep You, you can night. still have realisations and BFOs like blinding flashes of the obvious. It'll still happen for you. It will. But, yeah, it's just it takes time, right? Yep. So your experience is definitely going to be different to my experience. Well, and that's just because we're... Different people. Different on beings. different journeys. Yeah, and, and, and different parts of our journey. Yes, yes. Like you might relax a lot more, let go and have because a I far do better love... experience than I do and fall asleep and think it was the most amazing thing in the world. Yeah, because I do love my baths. Yeah. So I love so my... for you... What am I yeah. using at the moment? I'm using... I've got the betonite clay, which I love, and I've got the zinc and oatmeal powder bath. And also, oh, I haven't been doing the Epsom salts as much because it does sting my skin a bit. Mm. So I haven't done that for quite a few months. But I did do that, I don't know, maybe a year ago. So maybe I should give it a go. Yeah, my skin exactly. Holds up. <laughs> you, yeah, and perhaps you'll have a far better experience than me and, you, and you'll let go and you'll really enjoy yourself. You know, like you just don't know how you're going to react. Yeah. Like, you know, I've had... In my opinion, better meditation experiences when I've been um, laying in bed listening to guided meditation because I've felt safe. Yes. And safety is definitely, like, so important. It is, although I realise the reason why in certain situations I struggle to let go is because of fear. Yes. Where if I wasn't in an environment where I was vulnerable and didn't feel safe, that wouldn't have come up. Well, that's true. So it's a bit of a catch-22, isn't it? Yeah, so sometimes the only way that you can grow is through pain. Yeah. As crazy as it sounds. And just don't fall asleep. Just, just doing scary stuff. But and just don't fall asleep, Dan. Well, that reminds me of a guy who – so I had a life coach when I first got into all this stuff back in the day, and he had a life coach, right? And his so life, the life coach – life coach has a life coach. Yeah, okay. That's normally how it works. And He's got to learn from someone, doesn't he? That's it. And this life okay. coach who he had had a saying – and this saying was, do something scary and exciting every day. One of the things I've learned on my journey is that saying is becoming more and more true. Yeah, scary There's a and lot exciting. of truth in that every single day. What did I do that was scary or exciting today? Uh, I don't know, but the problem with... Um, oh, I know. Remember? What's that? For the first time What'd since you do? we moved to Brisbane, I thought to myself, you know what? I need to find a new hairdresser. Yeah. That was scary and That's exciting right. for me. Yeah, I remember now. That was very scary. Yeah. And remember how I was going through Facebook, all the sites, all the Facebook groups, and I was trying to find some recommendations and I was just like almost like my palms were sweating and I was like, should I call this person, should I not? It was like a first date, wasn't it? Because yeah. just for a bit of background, everyone, I, when I was in Sydney, I – had the same hairdresser for 20 years. A new hairdresser, barber, anxiety it's, is real. Yeah, I've had to find a new one. exciting, but it's... Yeah. So, yeah. It, All that fear. Are they going to stuff my hair up? Yeah. It's the biggest and one. And then I was looking at some reviews and then I saw some really awful photos of some negative reviews on some different, you know, hairdressers. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I just can't. I can't do this. And then I was going to stop. And I was like, you know what, this is the year for me of putting my foot forward and making decisions because I haven't had my hair cut in like 10 weeks, have I? Yeah, so, exactly. you know, when your daughter says that, you know, you need to go get a haircut, it's you time probably to need get to go haircut, get a haircut. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Just trust me on that one. <laughs> yep. When your six-year-old tells you that you need to get a haircut. You need a haircut. You definitely need a when haircut. When she says you've gone grey. Dan, come on. <laughs> it's time to get a haircut. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Just giving you a plug. Oh, okay. I'm blonde with a few whispers well, of... Well, your natural colour is brunette, isn't it? Yes, brunette. But I'm blonde because I've just got a few greys in there. So yep. they so need to do blonde. Going blonde's easier. It was ash brown before with all the greys and it just didn't she look She lost right. her beautiful brunette hair. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and I wanted it for the wedding, didn't I? Yeah, and it just wasn't happening. It just did not happen So you're all. blonde now. 
Yeah, so I suppose that's the biggest thing, guys. If you want to take away anything, it's to do something scary and exciting yeah. every single day. Yeah, and you've definitely ticked that off today, haven't you? Yep, and I suppose another point I can touch on is even some people who you admire, who you think are great, who they're fearless, who they do this, who they do that, or, or whatever it is that they do, a lot of it too is, believe it or not, they're actually in their comfort zone because they have been doing these things for so long, it's become their normal. So no matter who you are, if you employ this, do something scary and exciting every single day, you are definitely going to grow and develop a lot quicker Yeah. than if you didn't. Yeah. And regardless of what level you're on. Definitely can attest to Regardless of what that. you're doing. Yeah. Well. Well done to you, Dan, for stepping outside of your comfort zone today. Thank and you. And getting into that float tank for the very first time. Yep. You overcame some fears there. And yeah, you're very exactly. relaxed. And it sounds like you're ready for bed, aren't you? You can't stop Oh, yawning. totally. I'm so ready for bed. <laughs> yep. It's definitely worked. I'm relaxed. Yeah. And with that, I think thank we you for listening. better wrap it up. Thanks Definitely. so much for listening, guys. And uh, we'll speak Hope to you, you all soon. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. Yeah, hopefully. Till next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.